channel. I'm Dean, and today we're going to be installing this Rock Hard 4x4 Sports Cage kit on Ryan's 2020 JL. This kit is not painted. We're going to first uh, uh, remove the top, then we're going to test fit it, and then we're going to go ahead and paint this at towards the end of the video. So, I'm not sure how long this is going to take us, but we're going to go ahead and uh, get this project started. So, first thing we're going to do is unbox it. So, here it's the Rock Hard 4x4. And this is just a kit. This uh, just enhances our stock Jeep uh, roll cage that we have. So in here, looks like we have uh, Rock Hard uh, catalog, so that's pretty cool. Hardware kit. So with the Rock Hard 4x4 cage kit, it's pretty cool because you can build it for a two-door or a four-door, depending on the, the accessories that you want to buy. Since we have a two-door, uh, we don't have to buy as many accessories. So in the two-door version, we basically have two parts. We have this front part here. This mounts to the top of the existing row cage which is above the windshield, and this goes below the windshield. So you can see this is the front windshield here. This goes below the front windshield. This is above it. Basically, we're just gonna tap and bolt this into the existing cage. So before you paint this or anything, they recommend that you test fit it. it comes with a special bit. Uh, these roll cages in the stock JL are hardened. So we're gonna have to make this all fit before we paint it. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the the top off the Jeep, so we'll go ahead and get Patrick and Ryan to do that. So you don't lose your hardware. You got little tubbies for them down here. Uh, And don't forget to unplug it, guys, like what we did. <laughs> and there's a little bit of clip here. Push in and pull. And that's what it looks like without the top. Looks pretty good. So we are going to color match the existing roll bar we went and bought the paint already and um, so that's the first part of the install we'll probably go ahead and pull this in the garage where it's not so hot we're gonna drop the windshield still first thing we need to do is move the cap because we got to remove the windshield wipers Ryan already let kind of loosen that up and what we're gonna do guys is mark the windshield wiper where it's existing at that way we'll get it back exactly where it is so we just got a paint pin And we just kind of mark it like that. So these are just uh, battery terminal pullers that we're using. Sometimes it gets stuck, it's rare, but this one's one of the ones. Yeah, Petra says sometimes they just kind of get stuck on there and it's kind of hard to... Trick. Kind of hard to get off. So Ryan's working on the puller. Hot dog, look at you go, buddy. There we go. There we go, you heard that pop? That just released it and that's all it takes. It's nothing like having the right tool to do the job. Yeah, buddy. There we go, and a little bit of muscle. A battery terminal puller. <laughs> that makes sense. Doesn't matter, whatever works. Be finger tight. So good old Jeep. Good old Jeep. The torque, uh, is it a 50, Ryan? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> so that one's loose already. Probably a 40. This one's loose too. Maybe someone's trying to steal your windshield. Okay, we're just going to stick a towel, even though we got these rubber pads. And there we go. Okay. All right, so we got that pretty much. We'll go ahead and uh, get it in the shop, guys. A 
Okay, that's for the lower part of the windshield. As you'll notice this cut out here, since that goes on the driver's side, and that's where the VIN pokes through. Okay. Our hardware. Yeah, hardware and instructions. And instructions, okay. Let's see what we have there. Yeah, those are cool stickers. One you'll see here, this will fit through here, like that. So the, the trick part of this is, is you have to use low speed like this between 300 and no more than 500 RPMs to go really slow. The stock cage is hardened steel. Um, these are If these are hardened, that means they're very brittle, so you don't wanna make sure you get no side pressure on these because these will break fairly easy. Um, as you chuck them. As I chuck them. Uh, this is actually a hole size. So once we mark where all the, where these go, these holes where we mark them on the existing roll bar, this is a template. And basically this is what fits in there. And so we'll use this drill bit. We'll drill a hole. You'll see how much bigger that is. Then we'll come back with this uh, carbide uh, grinding bit. And then we'll make that hole and take it out to this size. So this is the size that the Zerk fits need to be. Then what happens, you'll take the tool, imagine this washer here being the roll bar. So that'll go like that. And then you'll take this and this here, will, when you pull this in, it will squeeze this Zerk nut tight against the existing roll bar. Pretty standard. Um, I suppose we can show it. In yeah, so, I mean these are these are a little heavier duty than some that we've seen. They're just a little thicker. Um, again, this is a sports cage. The idea is to hold these. This holds it in place. So during a roll, um, typically all the pressure will be on pushing downward on the roll bar. Um, if we feel that we have to, we can always come back in and weld these up. But uh, the idea of a bolting cage for us is we don't have to pull out the cage. We don't have to disconnect all the elect electrical. Um, we can bolt this in and have some extra protection. Very carefully, listen. Do it again. You can hear that? Brian's got a baby rattle. Awesome. That's just some slag or something left over. So you want to be very careful here, guys. You don't want to break your window or scratch too much. So the idea is to fit this. So Ryan will want to say his down first where it fits perfectly around the, the VIN. All right, first thing we're going to do is we have this level back there by Patrick, which is right now zero. And then we're going to also just do a sanity check and grab that level. It's and it does look level so and what we did guys is we just put some micro cloth here just to kind of keep it from scratching but we use these welding magnets to hold that in place so our idea next is to go ahead and use a centering drift punch which is this you see that little tit on there so when we put that in there we'll get a nice center hole so we'll go ahead and get that done perfect yeah, we're okay, good. Ryan's just kind of centering the bar in between the A pillars. Um, if you could look, how's that look, Ryan? It's zero. Been down this route. You see where we marked it in orange? And there's the center. Now we're just gonna take a drift punch and make that hole a little more of an indent. So this, this cage on the stock JL is hardened. I mean, it's not super thick, but it is hardened. That made that All right, so now we're going to go ahead and drill each of those 
four marks. And we're gonna use the special hardened bit, carbide bit that came with the kit. We're gonna drill this around 300 RPMs. And the idea is you don't wanna put much side pressure on those bits and put a whole bunch of pressure on since it's hardened, it's brittle. And like Patrick said, just let the bit do its job. You can see right there, it's drilling. That's got a nice little bead coming off of it. They gave us two bits, right? Yeah, and it comes with two bits, but we got like 12 holes to drill. All right, so there's our first hole. Don't go based off the orange dots. Yeah, there's our, don't go out, you know, that's, the orange is not the center. It was the center was the, the hole, the prick punch that we had in it. So we're gonna draw all four of these and then we gotta use the template. It's like a, a washer and then we grind to that. So Ryan's gonna go ahead and do the top one now. Hit that one. Got Patrick over there doing the other one. You don't want to heat it up and make it harder is what you don't want to happen. Now we're gonna put the temple on there, which is the washer to go ahead and grind out to the right size. So Ryan's gonna use the washer template, center it around the hole perfect, and he's gonna go ahead and highlight around it. And that's where we're gonna use the grind, where we're gonna to grind to. Just like that. That's basically, you just go tell your dirt nut. Yeah. So that's our guide to the black, just like this side. Now we're gonna take the grinder to the edge of the black and then we'll take the nut dirt and see how it fits. We don't want it too tight, don't want it loose. We just want it kind of a snug. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, start grinding. So here we have a air grinder here, and this has got the special bit, a carbide bit, I'm sure, that comes from Rock Hard 4x4. So we're gonna go ahead and start oblonging that hole. Kind of see how that fits in there, the zerk nut. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that one and the other one yet. So Ryan's going and Bring collapsing that zerk neck fitting with the tool. You can see as it gets tighter. Not too sure how tight to go. Well, you know what? Pretty tight. 
That's what I don't know. Okay, that's probably good. Fuck it. So we put some anti-seize on it. See how that works, yeah, I didn't go all the So, if you look, you can see kind of like little like butterfly wings. When you suck that down, you want those to become flush with the back side of the cage. Yeah, that's better. All right, guys, this is the Zerk uh, nut, and this is the insertion tool. So you'll see we have this uh, Allen bolt and this just a uh, larger nut that spins. So basically, so when you put this inside the row bar, you'll push this through, you'll tighten this down, and when you tighten it all the way, imagine this being inside the row bar at this point. And as you tighten this, this clamps and pulls this out. So it's just kind of like they call it a zerk fitting. You know, it's kind of like a drywall bolt. Um, same type of thing. So that's what goes in the row bar. So it's fairly easy to do. The other one. So I'll show you the first one. So you can see it in there, how it's sucked in. Little holes in it. So as Ryan tightens that bolt up, the nut that he's holding with the 14 millimeter wrench is just spinning and it's grabbing the back of the zerk nut and compressing it and will make a compression fitting against the inside of the row bar. All right, now I need to hold the nut. The back one's holding the cord. And you just kind of snug them when they're kind of tight like that. You just go by feel until this gets tight. Just take it out. All right, so we got two done. All right, just one more, then we'll test fit the front lower windshield uh, crossbar, see how it fits. All right, so now we're gonna put the bar in, see how everything lines up. Snug them up a little bit and see if the center's up nice. Might put a level on it, make sure it's level. Not really much you can do that. True. All right, guys, you can see there, there's the lower bar installed. Came out nice straight, looks sharp. It's gonna look really good once we uh, uh, paint that. We're gonna color match the Jeep. It's that Stingray Gray. 
That's what it looks like in the inside. So now we're gonna go ahead and start the top. So this is the top T section. So this is the top of the row bar. You can see the steering wheel there. And Ryan's over there and this is the top T part here. So it kind of looks like a T. So what we did, we measured from here to this edge here on both sides were 21 and a half inches. And then we used like a feeler gauge or a... Yeah, here. We end up using a punch here. I don't know what size this is, but it's a little, it's probably a, an eighth of an inch. And basically we stuck it in here on both sides and that worked out perfect for us to get it um, squared up. So what we're gonna do here now is we got to drill each one of these. There's three here, three on that side, and then two back here. So there's a total of eight eight uh, holes we need to drill. So we'll do the same thing, just like what we did on the, the lower part of the row bar, um, which is, you can see it right there. So we're gonna go ahead and take that center punch that we had and we'll just center punch it, each one of those. And um, then we'll drill it and then we'll use the template, the washer template, grind them out, and then we'll put the nut certs in. And I did these ones here already. Now he's gonna take the center punch here. Ryan's gonna here. go ahead and mark the holes with the, and I'm gonna kinda sharpen. Try to hold it down. Yeah, try not to rock the Jeep too. Okay. Section, and we'll go ahead and start drilling. So we'll see through. So Ryan's being real careful. We know there's wires below there, so we're being lazy and not trying to take off the super bar. So I have a feeling this isn't as hard as the other section. Is it? No, I'm able to push harder here. Oh, okay. It's just the angle of the dangle. All right, guys, so those are the three there. Two right there next to Ryan and those three over there. Now Ryan gets to grind. So we need to get the template. Got it centered perfect. No such thing is perfect. This is the one. So we're gonna grind out to where those black holes are. All right, so now Ryan's gonna go ahead and use the Zerk tool installer and go ahead and tighten these down. Thank you. 
Ладно. So we just got to clear off some of that. <laughs> we just put a little bit of anti -seize. It's everywhere. It's anti -seize. Have you ever seen not everywhere? It gets everywhere. Man. He's got goop off, huh? Everything lining up okay? No. That did that side. So. Got the last one in. One way to make sure it's not crushed. All right, well, we're just doing a test fit, guys. Gap look about the same? Yeah. All right, guys, you see? All right, everything lined up perfect, didn't have any problems. All we gotta do now is uh, clean the T bar and the lower windshield bar, that one down there. In the deep. And we're gonna take all that out. And we're gonna go ahead and put some brake cleaner and clean all these, uh, uh, the roll cage. Then we'll scotch braid it tomorrow. And then we'll go ahead and prime it and paint it. And then we'll do the final install. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and now remove. We're gonna go ahead and remove the sports cage and go ahead and uh, get it painted up and get all fixed good. bracket now we're gonna go ahead and clean the roll bar and then scotch bread it prime it and paint it so we're gonna take some brake cleaner and just start getting all the oils and stuff off this so they ship this with oils and stuff to keep it from getting rust um, so Ryan's just gonna clean all that off real good and we're gonna use some scotch bright and scuff it up. Okay, now Ryan's gonna go ahead and start scotch brighting it. Uh. 
Uh, we're just trying to get a nice clean surface. We're gonna be using an etching primer. Montana Big Sky um, primer here. This is a gray primer, so we got to go ahead and um, um, use primer. We're going to use some uh, reducer. This is a medium reducer, and then we're going to use some catalyst, some hardener here. So we'll go ahead and just go ahead and open up the paint. All right, guys, we got the primer all done. Came out decent. So we just need to wet sand these and then we'll go ahead and uh, paint them gray. So Ryan's go ahead and wiping down with grease and wax remover. We already um, sanded it with uh, 300. Uh, we're pretty much ready. Just go ahead and spray it. This is actually acrylic enamel system 18, so there's no clear coat. So we're going to mix this uh, one part uh, paint, one part uh, hardener, and two parts reducer. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, guys, it's the same day, but it's night. Um, the roll bar seems to be dried pretty good. We're going to go ahead and install it tonight. Looks like the power match is pretty good. The color match came out really good. They'll see the VIN. Okay, now we're gonna put the T-section up. It's a tacky right 
Let's go. Got oh, the bolts. Yeah. That's gonna look good. Range just cinching that down. All right, guys, see how that worked out. This is the top. I just got to clean it up a little bit. Um, get some anti-seize we got to remove over there. All right, this is what it looks like in the inside. And there's the lower windshield. Okay, we'll go ahead and get it back together. Came out good. The paint matches perfectly. 